this meeting initially was planned to be very technical, but there were a few more people than I anticipated, so we're going to do a little bit of an overview, and then we'll get as technical as people are interested in pursuing. Um, I, I want to tell you a little story first. Uh, about three years ago, um, well, it was more than three years ago, but it began unfolding in a meaningful way three years ago. A number of people, some of you call them investors, I convinced that we could do something that hadn't been reported in the medical literature, that we could increase bone density, and we could raise testosterone, and we could reverse coronary calcium, and that we could, in a measurable, meaningful, no BS, objective, serious way, reset the biological clock. Now, these men were visionaries, or foolish, or both, but it turns out their bet paid off. We've actually done all of those things. We have documentation of every one of those claims. And we're in the, one, one of those articles has already been presented at a scientific conference and several more are coming out. Um, so these were, in my, my opinion, brave and wonderful men who made this bet that I wasn't crazy. Now they haven't established that yet. <laughs> but uh, their bet was correct. Those things are achievable. The human body has an enormous innate capacity to heal itself that is radically underappreciated, rarely quantified, and in any event ignored by organized medicine for reasons that are actually not condemnatory of medicine, but nevertheless medicine doesn't pay much attention to the fact the body has an enormous capacity to heal. To understand why that's true, you've got to understand this. Mitochondria are the engine of life. Now, may, some of you may not know what, a mitochond what the mitochondria are, and it's not hard. Um, but we'll get into that as much de detail as you'd like. We've got some great videos and electron chain transports and Krebs cycles and all sorts of stuff. But what you need to understand is most diseases, in fact, all of aging, are diseases of mitochondria. Now, you may have never heard that, but it's well established in the literature. It's not a maybe. And there hasn't been a very serious effort within uh, organized investigatory medicine to address this problem because the mitochondria are little tiny organelles inside the cells. They are the engine of life. And there are so many layers of complexity built on top of that mitochondria, even though that's the nexus of all the problems, that people just say, yeah, we can't fix that, so let's fix something else. Turns out your body can fix that. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. The mitochondria or the engine of life, we're going to come back to that. But what I want to sketch out for you is a theory that's tied to facts that explains why all those things that those investors made a bet on several years ago are true. And that is that you can reset the biological clock. You can become healthier, physically younger. Those are real, objective, reasonable goals. Now, sometimes with theories, it's too empty. It's kind of like, well, that's interesting, but how does that tie to facts? Hopefully, these are so clear, simple, clear, clear, clear. Please help me be clear if I'm not. <laughs> Tell me. Such clear concepts that the theory explains the facts. That's, the, that's when you've got an elegant theory. We hope this is one. Um, so these are built on key concepts. The key concept number one, you've got it there. Understand the natural history of aging and disease. Everybody knows George Santayana's famous quote about he who does not know history is condemned to repeat it. Well, we think of that in terms of world historical forces. It's true in life. If you don't understand the history of disease and aging, you won't fix it in your own life. And medicine has done a wonderful job of explaining how true this is. We now understand the natural history. You're born a baby, you turn into an old person, what happens along the way, that natural history. If you don't understand that natural history, then intervening at any point doesn't make much sense. And a lot of times people don't know the natural history. So know your history. Santana, you remember that guy. Anyway, 
the history of aging and disease is everything gets worse and less. Now, I know most of you haven't noticed that. Uh, <laughs> well, I have. Um, and here's just some things, but this is just some things, but they're big overriding things. This is just what happens to everybody. This is life. Bone density goes down 2 to 5 percent, unless you've got a real problem, in which case it goes down a lot more. Now, every single year from about 20, boom, just down, boom, just goes down. Ah, who knew? What it <laughs> Testosterone goes down. Um, I'm not clear that whether husbands or wives notice that first, but in any event, it's a problem because it's not simply related to sexual function. Testosterone is an essential hormone of well-being for both men and women. Okay? This goes down for both, by the way. Ventilatory exchange goes down 5% a year. When you're 20 years old, 21 years old, 22 years old, you can breathe. That's all ventilatory exchange means. Breathe, move air. 5% less a year. It's life. It's all downhill. <laughs> Coronary calcium scores, go, now this is amazing, go up 50 to 100% per year. And for those of you who are not familiar with coronary calcium, it's a log scale, so it's not quite as crazy as it sounds that it doubles every year or two. But what coronary calcium does is it measures, it's, a, it's an index. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting over a cold, and that phone is down there because I've got a whole bunch of sick people at home. So forgive me if <laughs> I answer the phone. Anyway, uh, past contagion, by the way, if anybody's worried about that. Um, <laughs> I got to thinking about the last one that was puking when I, when I said that. Now I'm, oh, anyway, the, the point of coronary calcium is it is a marker of the atherosclerotic burden. What the heck is atherosclerosis? Hardening of the arteries. And that's an old common term we've often all heard, and it's plenty accurate enough. This is the way we measure the hardening of the arteries. Calcium makes them hard, it's related, etc. That's a way to see the atherosclerotic burden in your body, in this case, in the coronary arteries. It doubles every one to two years. That's just as inevitable as this. That's the natural history of aging and disease. So key concept number one, understand the natural history. This is what's going to happen if you don't do something about it. Oops, pardon. Nope, that's not it. Oh, where's backup? No. Where is it? I'm trying to get previous is what I'm trying to do. I'm just going to go to the old pointer. There. This is kind of a graphic illustration <coughs> of everything gets worse. This happens to be bone mineral density in men. And you see it peaks about 20, and it's just downhill from there. What's interesting about this yellow line, which starts kicking in, actually in about the 40s for a certain percentage of the population, that's the basically the spontaneous fracture threshold. In other words, you're walking along, having a nice day, and your back collapses, a vertebra collapses. This happens. This is men. This isn't women. So this is testosterone, growth hormone. Name something you like. That's it. Okay. Um, that's the natural history of disease. That's just a graphic way to look at that. 